You, finding life rather dull, dreaming again of exotic places, wishing you were somewhere else, we offer you Escape. Escape. Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape with us now to a small fishing boat off the California coast and a night of terror and death at the hands of a brilliant madman as Bud A. Nelson tells it in his exciting story, Seven Hours to Freedom. The Pacific Ocean off the coast of Southern California is usually thought of as calm and peaceful, where there's very little danger. But don't take the Pacific for granted, or you'll be writing your name in foam and throwing it into the wind. There can be trouble out there, all kinds of trouble. The winter months are the lean ones along the coast. Lou and I scrape the bottom of the barrel to make fuel and stores for my boat, the Merry Widow. Rigging for mackerel is fishing the hard way. You've seen the mackerel fleet sneak up on the coast. Those ghostly cities of lights offshore. Guys like Lou and myself trying to make a payload with lights and stinking chum. Mashed, marinated muck you toss overboard with your bare hands to attract the fish. We were anchored alone west of Point Doom Whistle Boy, about a mile out. It was dark except for the spot we flashed on the water and the flashing of headlights on Highway 101 where it dips down to the shore to get a run for Zuma grade. There were mackerel around and they were ready. Come on, baby. Up you come. And a boy, Lou. Keep him coming. Aye. I'll move the chum out into the light. Hiya, hiya. Come on, kids. Free chow. Good, juicy, chovey paste. Come and get it. Oh, boy. They're hot. Hey, low. They're swarming into the spot. They worked the edges, Lou. Yeah. They're about ready for the net. Oh, look at them. Three or four pounders. Show me a spot, boy. Lay it right in front of me. They're ready for the net. Uh, currents offshore. Uh, drag toward me. Right. He's in him. Oh, boy. They're hot and heavy. And that's alive. Uh, fell her up. Train him. Dynamite. Come on, kiddies. Come to pop. Oh. Ah. Ah. Hey, beauties. Good boy, Lou. Keep him coming. Swamp us. That's the way it works. If you hit it, you forget the smell, the scum, the numbness in your hands, the icy water in your boots. You forget you're heaving 30 to 50 pounds on the end of an eight-foot pole. And you see dollars pile up in the bin boards on your deck. You forget everything around you until... They're gone. And you notice that there is a world around you. Uh, here they go. School's out. Uh, two tons at least. Yeah. Ah, huh. looks like another wreck on Zuma grade. Yeah, look at the headlights. People just can't pass up an accident. It must be a pretty bad one. I'll take a boat any day. Here, yeah, let's get out of here. We can make it back in time for chow. Yeah, six fried eggs seasoned with Tabasco sauce, bowl of chili, and a pot of black coffee. It sounds good to me. Boy, that stuff sure gets cold. Yeah. Hey, get the anchor. Let's get out of here. Fire up. I'm for it. Okay. Run up on it. Get in. Hold it. What's the matter? Anchor's bowled. 
Want to back down on it? Feels like rock. Uh, take a turn on the cleat. Let the swell break it loose. Hey, she's really caught fast. Uh, wait a minute, Lou. Give me some slack. I'll back off. What's wrong? I don't know. Uh, come here. What's up? Look. Company. Yeah. What the devil are those guys doing out here in a little rowboat at this hour? They're either drunk or crazy. They're sport fishermen. But I don't see any tackle. Now hold there! Wait! Please wait! Oh, they're in trouble. Look. Guy in the stern. Hunched over. Hey, get the boat hook, Lou. I'll rig a fender. That tide's doing more good than the oars are. These boys aren't seamen. Nah, nah. Watch the roll when he pulls you alongside. Hey, you in the bow, catch the rack. Hold yourself off. Hold it up, Jake. We have an injured man here. Lend a hand. Yeah, sure. Down, get aboard. Ellis, help Stacy. Help him. Dead weight. Give me your hand. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Now, my injured friend. All right, you and a skiff. Yeah. Hand him to me. Yeah. Now, right here. Uh, lift him as high as you can. Now, now, slip your hand out. Okay. There. You got him? Now, Lou, open the hatch to the cabin. Right. Uh, move that gear off the bunk. Unfortunate thing. Very unfortunate. Uh, hand me the first aid kit. On the bulkhead behind you. Completely unnecessary. Efficient shooting, wouldn't you say? Perilously near the heart. Yeah. Fatally near. Here, yeah, put the kit back. It's too late. How this happen? Loaded gun. <laughs> yes. Loaded gun in expert hands. This may be pretty funny to you, mister, but I don't think it'll go over very big with the police. The police? No, I suppose not. Poor Stacy, his fourth and final loss. Look, mister, what's the story? Oh, that's right. <laughs> you came in at the end. Uh, but first... What? What's a gun for? Your protection and mine. Forgive me, young man, for pointing this at you. I use it only to establish command. Outside, go on. Work. I'm getting pretty sick of your fancy yapping and no action. Yeah, master mind. You got us into this now. Come up with a way out. My friends despise me, Captain. Look at them. Young Ellis. Shut up, Burke. I warned you. He's a coward, a thief, and a murderer who fancies himself equal to any known knife artist. You know I'll kill you, don't you, Burke? If it's the last thing I do, I'll cut that fat off of you. It will be the last thing you do, Ellis. And Dowd there. He killed two men, wasn't it, Dowd? Two defenseless men. Feed on, you greasy slob. You're digging your grave with your tongue. And Stacy, poor dead Stacy. Keep talking, Burke. Keep flapping your big mouth while the law sets up another trap. Why don't we get rid of these two punks and get moving? Yeah, give me that gun, Burke. You ain't got the guts to do nothing. You're all talk. Give me that gun. Stay right where you are, Ellis. You two, Dowd. I supplied the intelligence that saw us this far. And I really don't need you anymore. Sit down. Both of you sit down right by that tank. You yellow bird. Paint dirty yellow. Make me sit down. Go on, Bert. Make me sit down. I don't want to have to fire this gun. Sound carries over water. Talk big, Bert, while you've got the gun. The only gun, Dowd. That highway is swarming with police cars now. They're saying dead or alive. The choice is up to you. Make one move toward me or these fishermen, 
And I make the choice. You make the choice. You chose to lead us into a trap because you didn't have the guts to shoot a measly highway cop. You got Stacy shot. You wrecked the car. Then you nearly drowned us in that leaky rowboat. You can thank me in that leaky rowboat that you're alive right now. I feel very kindly toward that rowboat. Pull it aboard. Go on, pull it aboard. You two may need it. One false move and you'll find yourselves adrift. Captain, get the anchor up. Take in what slack we can get, Lou. The line parts and parts. You will set your course by this pistol, Captain. Our destination is Mexico. Good work, I... Uh... A word of warning, Captain. I seem to stand alone. These fools I took through prison walls have turned against me. But I still have a pistol. How far is the international border? Seven, eight hours. I prefer seven. Seven hours to freedom. My freedom. And seven hours for us to consider your fate. You can start out to count the laughs in the Red Skelton show, but you'll wind up laughing so hard yourself, you lose the count. No question about it, Red Skelton is a very funny man with a very funny show. And this fall, you hear Red Skelton every Sunday evening on CBS. Rated a top comedian, Skelton has a special form of humor, a unique brand of madcap hilarity that leaves him gasping. You'll have a grand time. It's entertainment at its best. Be sure to listen to The Red Skelton Show every Sunday evening over most of these same CBS stations. And now, we return you to Escape. Dawn broke with a Los Angeles harbor light well on our stern. Mary Widow's bow pointed at Mexican waters and the pistol in Burke's fat hand setting the course. The morning was foggy. Other things were clear. Someone along Zuma Beach would find their rowboat missing. We had a dead man in the cabin, and the lives of Lou and I hung on the whim of a fat maniac. Our only hope was a radio. I switched the frequency to Coast Guard, tripped the mic to transmit, and hoped that someone would be listening. Yeah. It's more pleasant up here on the bridge, Captain. The cabin is somewhat stuffy. What's your master plan for the body? Loathsome things, dead man. Much as I'd like to dispose of it, we can't risk cluttering our trail. Let us hope there will be no more. There needn't be, you know, if you cooperate. Yeah. Yeah, the merry widow's at your disposal, Mr. Burke. As long as you hold that gun on the crew, there's no choice but to take you to Mexico. We don't have too far to go. Uh, just about due west of Long Beach, making 18 knots. You are unduly nervous, Captain. Is it the pistol? <laughs> Look at our friends huddled together down there in the stern. <laughs> uh, planning my assassination, and no doubt yours. You understand the situation, don't you? No. Then I'll tell you. This gun and I are your buffers, your guardians against the plotters back there. In exchange for this protection, you give me transportation. In a few hours, I will be a free man, and I shall go my way alone. Maybe. Radio. The radio. I underestimated you, Captain. Very clever. Well, I tried. I assume I've been broadcasting for some time. You have. Direct to the United States Coast Guard. I bow to you. How stupid of me. And you. 
Up to this point, you have shown some intelligence. These heroics give me no choice. All right, go ahead and shoot. You'll pile into rocks before you hit San Diego. You'll never see Mexico. Lou's no pilot, none of you are. You're right. You are still useful. Resume your course. Look, Burke, you're supposed to be the brains of the outfit. If you're even half smart, you'll get in that skiff and head for shore. You better not be on this boat when the Coast Guard catches up with us. If you are a religious man, Captain, I would suggest that you pray they don't catch up with us. Look, mister, my advice to you is to launch that skiff and hit for the beach. You're a fool, Captain. Until your little stratagem shows tangible results, I wait. And you live. Resume your course. Newport Harbor bore off our bow, swung a beam, and slid past the stern. With it went my hopes of help from the Coast Guard out of Newport. No more stations now until San Diego. At the foot of San Clemente's red tile roofs, I saw a Santa Fe streamliner rushing north towards Los Angeles. I wished I was on it and headed in the same direction. How far are we from the border, Captain? Uh, five, six hours. Good. If the Coast Guard heard your radio, they don't seem to be rushing to your rescue. Ha! <laughs> Take another look, Burke. Dead ahead and bearing down. Hold your course. Don't try to attract them or you die right where you stand. You, Lou! Yeah? Stay where you are. Hold your course, Captain. Mister, that's a Coast Guard picket boat. They got guns. Ellis, down. Stand up and wave. Make it look friendly. Don't overdo it. You, Captain, wave too. Wave, wave. Look at the fools. The friendly fools waving back. We're just friendly fishermen. They didn't even cut their speed. Two herringbone wakes met, merged playfully, overlapped, and faded. With them went my hopes of help from outside. Our only chance now was to get Burke's gun. The fish knives. But they were back on the cleaning chute, neatly racked. I turned to look. Gone. Three knives gone. My hand rested on the clutch lever, cast bronze, complete with grip and detachable. I had to get that gun. I tripped the key that locked the lever and... Ah! Got a deal. I've been expecting this. They're ready to cooperate. You, Lou, down the ladder. Just in case our good captain entertains any rash notions, you will be our hostage. Go ahead. Happy to oblige. Step right back to the little group, Lou. This conference will be of interest. I watched helplessly while Lou led the way aft where two criminals sat, backs to the bait tank. They rose as Burke lurched toward them against every roll and pitch of the boat. Ella suddenly stepped between Lou and Burke. The pistol roared harmlessly. Burke slumped balloon-like as Dow tore the pistol from his hand. Ella, knife in hand, kept slashing. Enough, fellas! Lay off! Lay off, I said! Give me that knife! Give me that knife! I said I cut him the fat slob. He didn't believe me, eh? Look at him! Blubber! Blood and blubber! Come on, Lou! Up that ladder there to your buddy! Go on! Yes, sir. Sit down there and stay put. You, Buster, keep this thing moving. Which way? Like Burke said, Mexico. As long as we come this far, we go all the way. Move in. Drive in closer to shore. How close? I'll tell you how close. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'll pick out a spot to beach the skiff. Then we'll move back outside the three-mile limit until dark, so that Mexican patrols can't find us. Ain't that nice. In the dark, I move in as close to shore as I can, and you go ashore in the skiff, and I head back up the coast. Just like that, huh? Well, Buster, you'd better pick a good spot to make a landing, because you're going in with us. Going in with you? What about this boat? Leave it, and the Mexican authorities... You're gonna drive this boat right up on the beach. That's what, right up on the beach. Wreck it? Look, Dowd, we draw close to ten feet of water. 
We'll ground a city block offshore. So what? I can swim. I got nothing to worry about. You ain't gonna need this tub no more. Look, look, Doug. If we beach this boat, we mark the spot where you go ashore. But put in by skiff and you won't attract any attention. My radio shot. It's a, it's two hours run back to San Diego. I can't holler anything that'll hurt you. It ain't two hours to Mexican cops. I can't go to Mexican cops. I haven't got a clearance. I'm not going to put into a Mexican port and have my boat impounded, am I? I told you how it's going to be. As soon as the Mexican authorities find this boat with bodies on board, they'll know you boys are over the border and how you got there. Hmm? Well, maybe you got something. Now, I'll talk it over with Ellis. Uh, don't try nothing. Lou? Yeah? I'm going to fake engine trouble. The master switch. One of us has to get down to the engines. The short hose on the manifold cooling system. Port engine side, salt water intake. Yeah? It's our only chance. Disconnect it. Foul the bilge pump screen. Flood the bilges? Yeah. We risk fire, but it's our only chance to frighten them guys into the skiff. Cut it. He's coming back. That's the way it's gonna be. How? Like I said first. Pile it on a beach. Now let's go. Oh, okay. Now, what's the matter? Are you okay up there, Doug? I don't know. She just quit. Now, we've been beating these engines. She's hot. Get it going. Oh, I have to get at the engines down below. Oh, no, you don't. Step on the starter. Come on, try it. It's hot, I tell you. 180 degrees. Right, look for yourself. It's 40 degrees too hot. Well, what does that mean? It means I gotta... No, go. you don't. Lou, you know what to do? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, check the oil filter first and the screen ahead of the pump. Uh, wait a minute, you. Okay. Try it again first. Go on. It's no use. The trouble's down the engine room. Go on, Lou. Hey, Alice. Yep. Go down in the hole with this guy. Keep an eye on him. Okay, sure. Try it now. I found the trouble. Tell him it's fixed. Hey, try it now, he says. That was it. Piece of kelp in the screen. Plenty of water now. Plenty. Good. Get going. Plenty of water. All the salt water that should be flowing through the water jackets of two big exhaust pipes pouring into the bilges. And two red-hot manifolds absorbing all the heat of the two big engines. I took a sight on the hull. Chine line, two feet above water. Bilge pumps sucking nothing but air. Ten minutes, riding six inches lower. Half hour, one foot down. Three quarters of an hour, 18 inches lower, water would be climbing up to drown out the batteries, exhaust pipes, white hot. I yanked the release on the CO2 system. White clouds sizzled up from below. Fire! Fire, we're sinking! Bilges full of water! Coming fast, we're going down! Well, what do we do, Captain? Get the skiff over the side before she explodes. Fire extinguisher, Lou! Cover me, I'm going below! Get the skiff over! Don't stand there, Dow! Down below, wait! You can't leave us here to sink! So long, suckers! <laughs> you all right down there, Jeff? Rats left us. I'll be right up. Whew. We nearly overdid it. The wood was smoldering. You're telling me. Battery's wet? Inch to go. Oof. Boy, that manifold was hot. Nearly didn't make it. Look at our friends beat water. Yeah, this proves the story about rats and sinking ships. Yeah, come on, Lou. Up on the bridge. <laughs> Watch their faces now. 
in the well? No, we need that water in the bilges. Boy, we throw a wake like a little Queen Mary. Turning up 2,800. Yeah, still a little hot. I want 3,000. Ah, look behind us. We're throwing a wake like a destroyer. Come on, baby. You big, big bird. 3,000. Churn, come on, around. That's a nice, tight circle. Wrap what are you going to do? Crash him? Ah, and the last sew him with a wake. Oh, we let Chop hitch their skip from four sides. You think they're in a sou'easter? Look at Dowd, trying to get a feed on us. He's... Hey, there they go, capsized. That's just what I wanted. Yeah, but they're hanging on to the keel of the boat. Ah, let them dig wood for about half an hour. Brother, that water's cold. <laughs> you should know. Hey, let's see if Dowd's still got a gun. I can't tell. Looks like he... He has. But he won't have for very long. His hands will get so numb, you think they're sawed off. Uh, set the bilge pump, Lou. We'll lighten the ship while we wait. Oh, and on your way back, uh, break out that bottle of Johnny Walker, huh? Might as well enjoy ourselves now that we got them guys where we want them. I wonder about the prices, Lou. Mackerel? Forty-two bucks. No, no, I didn't mean that. I meant bounty. Reward. The state of California owes us quite a little dough. Mileage. Two ton of spoiled mackerel. One radio transmitter. And four escaped convicts. Two of them on ice. Well, get the boat hook, Lou. The two live ones are ready for the gaff. Escape is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Today we have brought you Seven Hours to Freedom by Bud A. Nelson, with Jack Moyle starred as Jeff. Featured in the cast were Stan Waxman, Jack Crucian, Barney Phillips, and Lou Krugman. The special music for Escape was arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Ladies and gentlemen, next week, Escape will present one of the most unusual and terrifying stories of recent years. The Earth Abides by George Stewart, especially adapted for radio by David Ellis. It's a story of such scope that the producers of Escape, to dramatize its full impact, are presenting it in two episodes. So listen next week when we bring you the story of a man who wakes one morning to find human life has practically vanished from the face of the Earth. <laughs> CBS's lovely red-headed Saturday night comedian, Lucille Ball, pays an extra visit to CBS, the star's address, tonight. Lucille will be the special guest of Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. More famous guests, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, will pay one of their hilarious calls on Jack Benny. And don't forget, it's later today that Frank Sinatra starts his new Sunday afternoon series on this network over most of these same stations. Now, stay tuned for Make Believe Town, which follows immediately on most of the CBS stations. Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS, where you spend an hour with Frank Sinatra every Sunday afternoon, the Columbia Broadcasting System.